これより再起動を開始しますそれに伴いパスワードを再設定してくださいパスワード再起動が完了しましたパスワードを設定してくださいおちんちん祭りはおちんちん祭りを登録しましたお前なんてことをしてくれたんだ That gives me a brilliant idea. From that iconic scene in Cabans will be dispatched, I'm gonna build a gift box for Christmas where my friends would have to say inappropriate phrases in order to receive their presents. Now, before you say anything, I know it's July by the time this video comes out, but the thermistor in my 3D printer broke, which put the printer out of commission for an entire month as I waited for replacement parts to arrive. On top of that, there were a lot of setbacks as well as procrastination that made the making of this video way longer than it should. So, instead of giving my friends their presents on time for Christmas and bailing on this video idea altogether, I decided to force my friends to wait until I finish this project. Making the box can be broken down into two distinct sections. Programming the electronics and logic, which was supposed to be the hard part, but turned out to be the easy part. And designing, printing, and assembling the physical box, which was supposed to be the easy part, but turned out to be the most excruciating part of the build. So let's start with the electronics. For the electronics, I used two buttons, a USB microphone, a Raspberry Pi, a battery bank, and a servo. Originally, I was planning on using this spring hinge and a push-pulled solenoid hooked up to a Raspberry Pi through a relay. When the Raspberry Pi triggers the relay, the solenoid pulls out the plunger, allowing the lid to fly open due to the spring tinge. However, I soon realized that the solenoid isn't strong enough to pull the plunger out when there is a resistance placed upon it. And I was having trouble delivering the correct amount of power from the battery bank using a USB step up. So I decided to simplify the whole thing by actuating the lid of the box with a servo instead. For the gift box's logic, I wrote a Python program to run on the Raspberry Pi. To get the program to understand the speech and then convert it to text, the program first records an audio clip from the mic connected to the Raspberry Pi. The audio clip is sent to Google's cloud where it is then translated into text. The text is then sent back to the Raspberry Pi for us to use however we see fit. This speech to text system is amazing and was developed to make the world a better place. Currently, the system is helping people more efficiently write down their thoughts, allowing those with disabilities to more easily use modern technology, and in my case, give me a way to force my friends to say penis really loudly. Now that we clearly understand how it works, let's move on to testing the program. Cool, but I don't want the microphone on the box to always be listening all the time. Instead, I want the box to listen when someone is trying to get the box to open. To do this, I wired up a button and modified the code so the program only listens while the button is being held down. At the same time, I created a variable for the passphrase and then assigned the inappropriate passphrase that we'll use to open the box. Now to just wire up the servo. And now to test that it all works. Penis festival. Since it all works, I can move on to making the physical box. I modeled the box into three different parts, a front wall, a side wall, and a rear wall. The interior of the box has an elevated floor so I can hide the Raspberry Pi and battery pack underneath. The rear wall has this channel to allow the wiring from the servo to reach the bottom of the box. Similarly, the front wall also has channels to allow the wiring from the button and the microphone to reach the bottom of the box as well. With that done, it was off to the 3D printer. It was at this time that the first major setback occurred. During printing, the thermistor wire got caught on a nub at the back and ripped the wire into two. After a month of waiting and installing new parts, the printer is finally printing again. After what seemed like a hundred hours of printing, the walls of the box are finally ready. I have to sand some of the imperfections that appeared from either over extruding or from not having enough infill. Also, since some of the parts slightly warped during printing, I'm going to have to assemble the box before painting. This gives me an opportunity to fill in some of the gaps with plastic putty before priming the box for paint. While applying the putty, I noticed that I was an idiot and I forgot to model a channel in the floor for the microphone USB to pass through to the bottom. To fix this, I decided to drill a hole large enough for a USB. In hindsight, this was a stupid idea since I only had about 10-15% to infill for my 3D prints. Thus, instead of cleanly drilling through the floor, it was more like shattering my way through the floor. After sanding the putty portions, we're ready to prime. To get the box to have a nice smooth finish, 
I used filler primer to even out the print lines as well as the areas that were patched using the putty. After one cut of primer, I let the box dry overnight, and here's where the second major setback happened. The hot glued seams of the box began to pull themselves apart to the point where the box became unusable. So I remodeled the box as one part so there's no edges to fall apart from. However, the model of the box as one piece was too big to fit in the build area of my Prusa. So instead, I decided to drive two hours to use the 3D printers at the makerspace at my school. Originally, I was hoping to use one of their Ultimakers, but it turns out they were out of filament and they used a different diameter filament than the 1.75mm that I usually use. So instead, we used the Stratasys, an insanely expensive and advanced professional grade 3D printer. I was told it was going to take about 37 hours to print, so I was going to have to come back in a week. I returned one week later, full of excitement and relief to finally have the box printed and finally move on to the next step of the build. However, my relief and excitement turned out to be for nothing. When I arrived, I was told that early on in the print, the box did not adhere to the bed well and as a result, the print failed. So that was a waste of about a month. Guys, sometimes in life, we just have to accept the truth. Wendy's burgers are top tier fast food. The best girl in Kage Sum is actually Hayasaka. And to get this attention box done, I'm going to have to shrink the size of the box and print it myself. After a couple days of constant printing, the box is ready. Because the box is printed in one piece, there's tons of supports to remove. Instead of throwing 3D prints into the trash, I keep all the supports, small scraps, and failed or unused 3D prints in a bin to hopefully be able to recycle in the future. Peeling the support away revealed that the print was not perfect. There is a lot of weird horizontal gaps and bumps that need to be filled and sanded. To keep the inside of the box a nice deep black color, I'm going to cover these surfaces with painter's tape first. Once again, I'm going to be filling in the gaps with plastic putty, but this time I got proper tools instead of just using my finger. Now to just sand down the strange ridges caused by the print issue and the putty filled areas. Once everything is nice and smooth, the next step is to prime and sand the box over and over for a nice and smooth surface to paint on. To give the box its distinctive two-tone color scheme, I'm going to start by painting the center squares blue. Next was to cover the center squares of the box so that they remain blue when I spray the rest of the box silver. To do this, I decided to measure out and cut squares out of cardstock. These squares would then be secured inside the squares of the box using painter's tape. After cutting out one square, I realized that due to slight warping and other printing imperfections, Every square had different dimensions from the other. Because of this, I decided that it would be better to protect the blue squares by covering them with painter's tape instead. After a couple coats of metallic silver and removing all the painter's tape, the box looks great. Now I can finally put the electronics that I prepared months ago into their respective places. Since I shrunk down the overall size of the box, the white battery bank I originally planned to use is now too large to fit, so I had to replace it with this smaller black battery bank. To remember which wires from the various I.O. components connect to which specific GPIO pins, I made this handy chart to more easily wire everything up correctly inside the box. Since there's no breadboard in the box, I used this GPIO pin chart to identify which pins on the Raspberry Pi to plug into. Now, before you say anything, I know from the bottom this looks a bit like a bomb, but rest assured, this is not a bomb. I repeat, this is not a bomb. Now that we have all the disclosures out of the way, I want to make sure everything is working before installing the lid. Penis Festival. I forgot to mention that I installed this button and this RGB LED on the back side. The button is used to close the lid after it is opened, and the RGB LED is a status light for me to more easily identify the current process and errors occurring within the box. Then, in true microwave fashion, I secured the lid to the servo with a ton of hot glue. 
And there we go. I present to you the Ochinchin box. I've lost count of which number setback this would be. Now I know I've complained multiple times in this video that I had some warping issues with the 3D printer, but this time it actually caused an operational issue. The sidewalls are actually slightly curved inward and pinching the lid, making it so hard to open that the servo just rips the hot glue instead. To fix this, I slowly drilled a couple holes through the tongue part of the lid and secured it to the servo with a few M3 nuts and bolts. And I sanded both the inside of the box and the sides of the lid to make it slide more easily into place. Now to actually test the box before prematurely declaring it's finished again. Penis Festival. Yes, it works. It's finally finished. I've successfully made a gift box that opens when you say the phrase penis festival. It is finally time to force my friends to use it. Okay, so all you're gonna do, you're gonna press the button and you're going to say the password. Penis festival. Penis festival. Penis festival. Penis festival. Penis festival. Ah! And there we go, a fully operational Ochinchin gift box based off that scene from Combatants will be dispatched. Now if you'll excuse me, it is time to binge the third season of Kaguya-sama as a reward for finishing this video. As always, please consider liking and subscribing, I'll see you in the next one.